What's up guys, it's Mr. Bringle and today we're going to be practicing drawing free body diagrams and this is the uh, first practice assignment that we have. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, on each of these you're going to be given a picture and a description. You need to draw the free body diagram. Whoops, a little too far there. First one says a computer sits motionless on the table. We are going to be drawing the free body diagram for the object that is underlined in the question prompt. So in this case the computer. Um, so what we want to do is we want to first identify the vertical forces acting on the computer, decide if they should be balanced or not, and then we will look at the horizontal forces acting on the computer and decide if they should be balanced or not. So the first thing here is that uh, gravity acts on the computer and it is pushing down. The computer experiences gravity in the form of weight. And then um, we need to decide if there is an upward force acting on this computer as well. And I know there must be an upward force because if there wasn't, the computer would start to accelerate, right? Because right now what I've shown is unbalanced forces or an unbalanced force acting on the computer, which would cause it to accelerate in the downward direction. So what I need to do is I need to show an upward force that is equal to my downward force. So these two forces are equal here. And the reason for that is because the computer's not moving. So I know these forces have to be balanced. I just have to figure out what that force is. In this case, it is going to be a normal force. The computer is sitting on the table and the table is pushing back up on the computer. It is a contact force. The computer and the table are in contact with one another. And the normal force is a reaction to the action force of the uh, computer pushing down on the table. So we'll go ahead and put Fn for normal force here, and we are good to go. Um, now, looking at the horizontal forces here, there are none. So we're just going to leave this blank on the left and right side. There's nothing pushing the uh, computer either direction. We'll move on to number two here. It says a stopwatch hangs motionless from a chain. So once again, gravity is always going to be acting on the object. And it says it's hanging motionless from the chain. So I'm specifically doing this for the stopwatch, which is this part right here. And um, it says it hangs motionless. So what that tells me is that I do have an upward force and that these forces must be equal uh, because it's motionless. It's not, it's not accelerating. So um, that tells me there has to be this upward force on the last one. That was a normal force because the computer was sitting on top of the table and the table was pushing back up on the computer. In this case, the watch is in the air. It's not in contact with anything. So we cannot use a normal force here. Instead, it's the tension from the chain that is pulling up on the watch. So we will go ahead and label that as F subscript T here. Uh, the tension in that chain is pulling up right here. Um, it's not that the person is physically holding the watch. The person is holding the chain. The chain is pulling up on the stopwatch. Um, in this particular case, there are no left and rightward forces here, so we will leave it as is. Now, I do just want to point out before we move on, these first two objects are motionless and notice that they had balanced forces in all directions. Um, so in, obviously the only forces present in both of these examples were vertical forces. However, if you have no forces left and right, that still counts as balanced. So when an object is motionless, it has to be experiencing balanced forces in all directions. The next one is not motionless. In this case, we have a Boy, uh, boy uses a rope to pull a wagon to the left at a constant velocity. Okay, so let's start with vertical forces here once again. The wagon is sitting on the ground and the wagon is not moving vertically. Okay, the wagon is moving horizontally, but it is not moving vertically. So what that tells me is that it's motionless vertically and therefore must have balanced forces up and down. Okay, we know that gravity is always acting on the wagon. And then because the wagon is in contact with the ground and it's not plummeting through the ground, the ground is providing a normal force that is balancing out 
the force of gravity there. So we have, once again, normal force and gravity, and those two things are balanced here. Now, in this case, we are going to have horizontal forces. So let's start with the obvious one, which would be the, apply, or the, uh, the force um, that is going to the left here. Now, I want to be careful because um, the boy is applying a force to the rope. Okay, but it is the rope that is then applying a force to the wagon, which would be a tension force. So this tension force from the rope is pointed to the left here. Okay, force of tension. So again, if it was going to be a, an applied force, if we we're going to label this as an applied force, the boy would have to physically grab the wagon with his hand and pull the wagon okay in this case the person is pulling on a rope which in turn pulls on the wagon so yes the person is indirectly pulling on the wagon but not directly so we're going to label this as a tension force and then it does say that this is at a constant velocity here and what that tells me is that the horizontal forces must be balanced the only time when you will have unbalanced forces is when an object is accelerating. In this case, wagons moving at a constant velocity, that means we must have another rightward force that balances out with this tension force, and that would be the force of friction that opposes the motion of the cart as it rolls across the ground. Now, um, I know I mentioned this in my introduction video, when I'm looking at these um, in terms of hash marks, I'm not trying to say that friction and tension are larger than normal force and gravity. Um, we're going to look at these separately. So I'm only looking at the red hash marks um, when I'm looking at your vertical forces, and I'm only looking at the green ones when I look at your horizontal, horizontal forces. So um, I'm just trying to differentiate. I'm just saying these two are equal and these two are equal here. Okay, um, let's go on to the next page. We've got two more. These are kind of related here. So the... The first one is that a man pushes a crate to the right across the floor at a constant speed. And the other one is a man pushes a crate across the floor, causing it to speed up. Okay. Um, didn't say to the right, but same direction here. So um, let's, these are, these two free body diagrams are just going to be slightly different. The key here is constant speed versus speeding up. Okay. So as always, we are going to include the. Uh, that is a horribly curved line there, a uh, downward force from the force of gravity. And in this case, an upward force must be balancing the crate because the crate is on the ground. It is not plummeting through the ground. It is stationary. So we must have balanced forces vertically because the crate is in contact with the surface here, the ground, whatever that is. Um, that is going to be a normal force that the ground exerts back up on the crate. So we will label it as such. And that is going to be no different. We're going to kind of do these together. That's no different for the uh, bottom or the uh, speeding up crate either. We're still going to have gravity and normal force here. Okay. So, so far it's all the same. Now we're going to get into the horizontal forces where things are going to be different. On the on number four here, it says the man pushes the crate. Now his hands are in direct contact with that crate. Therefore, this is going to be an applied force. F subscript A. Okay. Now it says it's moving at a constant velocity. That tells me that there must be an equivalent leftward force. So this force and this force must be equal for it to move at a constant velocity or constant speed. Okay, now that is going to be the frictional force that is opposing the motion of the crate. Now, a lot of times people will ask me like, how can an object be moving at a constant velocity if there, or how can it be moving if it has balanced forces? Because people get stuck on the fact that balanced forces are also present for an object that is not moving. And so the general thought process there is that the two forces cancel each other out. 
remember Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object that's already in motion wants to continue in motion or an object that's at rest wants to stay at rest unless an unbalanced force is applied to it. So in this case, what happens is to get the crate moving, you have to overcome the amount of static friction that holds it in place. And you will have to push hard and then all of a sudden it starts moving and that static friction all of a sudden changes into dynamic friction or sliding friction and the value lowers for the friction so all i have to do to keep the box moving at that point is to push just as hard as the amount of friction which will balance it out and allow it to move at a constant velocity if i push more than the value of friction it'll speed up if I push less than the value of friction at that point, it will eventually slow down and stop. So for our next one, by that logic and what I just gave away here, is that we are going to have the same two forces here. We have the applied force to the right, and we have friction to the left. But the key here is that your frictional force must be smaller than your applied force. This will allow the crate to speed up. So that's going to do it for practice number one on the free body diagrams. You will have another uh, practice worksheet to do later.